So now let's go to Ohio, where a group is bringing God to public schools. Eli, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Cynthia, I would be delighted to. Guys, gals, and non-binary pals, it's one of two known regions in the space that is uh, completely devoid of any and all reason. Ohio is in the news today because LifeWise Academy, a nonprofit based in the state, is, direct quote, on a mission to put God back in the public school day. Operating in over 300 school districts across 12 states, LifeWise Academy takes advantage of Supreme Court rulings that allow them to legally provide religious instruction during school hours, including prayer, singing praise songs, and reciting scripture as long as the instruction takes place off campus. Critics argue that the program is bringing religious, uh, religion directly into public schools and causing children who don't attend to either feel left out or feel pressured to attend. Uh, this story is by Mike Hixenbaugh from NBC News on March 25th, 2024. Oh, my goodness. Well, you know, Helen, I know that you got some opinions about this, and I would love to hear you expand on your opinions, if you don't mind. Oh, I got them. I got, I got some opinions. OK, this is this is stupid and ridiculous. I am actually very, very upset about this because, um, yeah, we we know that, you know, Christians do this like they breathe, where they will look for loopholes in the Constitution and in public um, spaces to bring their religion to the masses. Um, but this is especially um, insidious because it's they're coming there to preach. And what's happening is like, you know, the kids are wearing like special red T-shirts and um, they go and then dur like during like um, a class like gym that they're not getting any formal instruction or lunch, they are swept into a school bus, <laughs> taking someplace special, brought back <laughs> and they have like candies and stickers and they're talking to their friends about it. And if they recruit enough of their friends, they get a pizza party. <laughs> Which so now they're using the children to indoctrinate, <laughs> which is disgusting. And school officials are just letting this happen. Now, I, I'm just wondering <laughs> what if there was a Muslim organization doing this? Mm. Or somebody that was Hindu, or, or for goodness, the, the satanic temple people, like, <laughs> you know, what? what would happen and it just it sets up this whole idea and like um no illusions from the skate the atheist was talking about this and now it's like now we've now we've created a situation where the sneak just have stars mm -hmm. and that's those stars are given to us by jesus and you're not part of the jesus club you don't get to participate and it's that othering that always happens when people think they're better than everybody else and kids are particularly susceptible to that and it should not be having happening during school hours yeah okay. <laughs> that was my first part of my rant <laughs> no it's, 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 it's fine it's fine it, it kind of reminds me and i'm pretty sure that lifewise is going off of the scripture that um out of the mouths of babes and sucklings god has ordained or perfected praise and it's almost saying not it's not almost but it's really like we're going to use children to beget other children and let them come so that they can go ahead and per, you know participate in our Jesus parade and we are basically indoctrinating them into this whole um area so that they can come and get stickers and candy and things of that nature it sounds very uh pinocchio to me you remember the island where all the little the little boys turn into donkeys that, that that's that's what it that's the imagery that has been in, invoked in my mind but regardless of my Im imagery uh jonathan you actually mentioned how lifewise actually should not be allowed by public schools to a system where non-participants are seen as social non-conformists can you please expand on that You're muted. You're muted. Uh, I am. That's what I do. I mean, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Oh, well, you know, the idea that um, they can even do this is, is rather amazing uh, because, but the history of it's also amazing because this has been done since 1952 and predominantly by Jewish and Muslim groups that are in their local area, you know. Um, the problem with this other ring of other students, you know, they all wear the same t-shirt, you know, it's like, you cannot other somebody more than you can't belong to my club, you know, kind of stuff. You know, we all know what we were as kids, you know, so that's really bad. But when it was only in a local group and they didn't have t-shirts and they just disappeared for a library period or something, nobody noticed. It wasn't being shoved in the faces of everybody else, right? But they franchised this. On their website, they have a 10-point procedure for getting this implemented in your school district. How to go about recruiting people, how to go about getting the signatures, how about get, you know, I mean, it's like doing the planning meetings, doing the, you know, it, it's it's a whole procedure. There's 10 steps to it. I'm not going to enumerate them here because it's it's rather sickening. But um the, the founder, Joel Penton, has developed that, and it's parents to establish a release time, and that's what this is called, and, the, and the, I'm just going to go over what the Supreme Court did. The ruling was in, in a 1952 U.S. Supreme Court ruling in the case of Zorach versus Claussen, held, in, uh, held that release time did not violate the U.S. Constitution because it did not amount to an establishment of religion um, in a 6-3 decision. Uh, by SCOTUS at the time. And there are some rules that they put in that decision. Must be off school property or government property, must be privately funded, and must have parental permission. So every one of the kids has to have a signed permission slip. Um, I can just see all these kids, but everybody else goes, mommy, please. Yeah, no. ex exactly. Everybody else goes and, you know, their mommy lets them do it. So why can't I go? And that's a actually perfect segue because I know, um, Eli, you talked about uh, the parents' role when it comes to situations like this. Um, please expand about that. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, I think... It Joel Penton uh, justifies the program by saying some parents want to be able to tell their kids they're going to learn about the Bible at school because the Bible is important to our family. And I think this is going to be a controversial opinion, but fuck what's important to your family. Not only – fuck what's important to my family too because we're talking about public education, and what's important to my family is not necessarily what's good for the public. What's good for the public is being aware of what the most – accurate, complete information that we have about the world, about reality, and knowing what that says about the biodiversity of life, about where the universe, like how it started or what happened after it started, to be specific. Um, it's important to me that my son learns those things because those are the things that we have a good reason to believe that they are true. He's going to learn those in school, but not because they're important to me or my family, but because they are probably true based on everything that we know. When it comes to personal belief and family values, it's not up to the school to teach that. That's up to you. Don't pass the buck on to somebody else to teach your child the myths that you want them to believe. You do that legwork on your own because if you can't justify your own beliefs to your child, then you shouldn't even hold those beliefs, let alone be teaching them, especially to the masses. Right on. I, I, I totally concur. Um, I, I wish that we had more of that sensibility, especially when it comes to our public school system. Like you're teaching kids rhythm, uh, what they say, reading, writing, writing and arithmetic, right? Not what Jesus did uh, on mm -hmm. that getting up or early morning on Sunday, right? That that's not your that's not your job as a school, and especially in public schools where it's publicly funded, where people are paying their taxes in order for that particular building and teachers to be employed there. Um, Helen, I'm coming to you uh, because one of the things that the article actually uh, talked about was uh, life wises, and I think that we kind of touched on this a little bit. Uh, Patriot Mobile. Uh, which is a far-right Christian cell phone company. And I think that they're actually even using it 
in um, a way to be able to kind of organize as, as far as like, you know, being able to not only get the funds and resources in order for them to do these things, but also to possibly even like, you know, get the kids in the first place. Um, tell us a little bit more how they actually fit into this whole story. So um, Patriot Mobile paid thousands and thousands of dollars for the, for the LifeWise movement to um, get started and they're funding it. And this particular company has some um, very questionable um, associations. Um, and I do want to encourage our list, our viewers to go to the LifeWise website. Um, there is a book that they are selling called During School Hours to um, implement um, religious teaching during school hours and how to get around the laws. So I encourage people to um, just read a little bit more about that. But let me tell you, um, some of the... Um, other organizations that are aligned with Patriot Mobile, um, Turning Point USA, again, um, we, I mentioned this before in a previous segment, segment, the Alliance Defending Freedom, Concerned Women for America, the NRA, Council for Life, um, Students for Life America, First Liberty, um, Moms of America, Moms for Liberty, Holy Ghost Ministries, and on and on it goes. Or um, CPAC. So this is a far right <laughs> Christian organization. This is not just oh we're going to go into schools and we'll teach people, you know, teach kids to believe in Jesus and we're so nice and we want them to be able to be good, responsible citizens. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Okay. Shut up. <laughs> like, um, and this is this is the thing that these these are not isolated incidents. These are the things that are going to start to spread out more and more across the country because they're well funded. And a lot because of religious organizations, there's a lot of tax loopholes and they get to churn it, churn that money over and over again to push these agendas into schools. So um, please, I, I, I go check out the Patriot. Um, mobile website as well. <laughs> um, they're aligned with several hate groups. Yay. <laughs> so, and they're also fighting. Um, also, I will point out the LifeWise is also fighting for um, LGBTQ plus um, people to not get the same rights as, as their fellow students in schools. <laughs> so it's a problem. <laughs> so uh, yeah, please go educate you. yourself. It's and and you can get mad like me. So that's fine. <laughs> yes, that, that is the that is the um, whole intention, people. Um, if you yeah. don't learn anything else from the nonprofits, to please get mad like Helen. Um, there is definitely, guys, a a blurring of state and church boundaries. The more and more we actually take a look at this story, and especially how LifeWise and Patriot Mobile and even some of the other organizations that are aligned with them really are telling people how to get around that whole pesky establishment clause thing. And Eli, you even talked about how and there was permission slips involved, and I think that Jonathan and Helen, you talked about it too. <clears throat> with parents actually participating in this. And I say this loosely, curriculum, okay? Mm -hmm. um, does that make it better or no? I don't think so. No, um, I, I think what it's doing is it's it's giving parents this illusion that like, oh, okay, well, you know, th it's giving them the ammunition to go and like when when people when they see people opposing this, they'll they'll like now defend it. Well, they send a they're not doing it. They're not forcing your student to do it. There's a permission slip. You don't have to sign the permission slip. But it's still like no, you're putting it right there. Like school, public school, public education should not be a vehicle for religious education, and that's what they're doing in this case. Whether it's it's tax funded or or you know maybe like it sounds like LifeWise is using their own vehicle like their own transportation their own facilities their own resources so it doesn't sound like any like taxpayer money is is funding this but I, it's is it legal is it constitutional it sounds like technically yes but that doesn't that it just it still doesn't sit right i just it, it doesn't make it okay no yeah um jonathan uh did you want to add anything to that As you are sure. muted. 
you, you can't let me keep turning my mic off because then I forget to turn it on. I'm old. I don't remember these things. Anyway, um, the uh, we do well to establish uh, this type of instruction system as skeptics and humanists and Satanists. Uh, the Satanic Temple might consider starting the same. Uh, give the secular kids a head start over their peers who are leaning, learning the Bible in science, philosophy, critical thinking, lessons they already have in the after-school Satan Club curriculum. If they expanded that a little bit, they could do it during hours. So when all the other little red t-shirts kids go do that, we could have our, our black and red t-shirted Satanist kids going off to... Um, Secular school. Secular schools are supposed to be secular. Sorry, kids. That's what they are. If you don't like them, I didn't like school either at first and learned to love it. So, um, but we could take all the kids that, that LifeWise leaves behind and load them onto a black Satan bus with racing flames and a full moon with a settlement lights on the moon. And it's just a thought, but I think that would be great because all the kids who say, I don't want to go on that red bus. This one's got like flames on it and there's a moon on it. Yeah, that's cool. I want to go to that one. I'm all about that. Just a thought. I, what about <laughs> what if about the flames idea? actually shot out of the exhaust as they were driving off to Satan school? Oh, yeah. As well. You could do all of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Matter, matter of fact, I'm even for dressing the kids in their own uh, leather jackets, biker leather jackets with studs, like silver studs all over them you know, with the emblem of the satanic club, uh, after school club on the back. Uh, I think that would be absolutely stellar. And if you're listening, organizing board of uh, the TST, because I know you listen to the nonprofits, hint, hint, but as I digress, <laughs> guys, LifeWise is just really blurring the lines. Don't sing, Cynthia. And blurring the lines between church and state, raising serious questions about the separation of religion and public education. It's one thing to teach about religion objectively in a comparative religion class, which I'm really all for. But it's quite another thing to bring religious instruction into school day, not even after school, during the school day. I can even imagine that these particular schools, these particular children who are leaving in the in the wheels on the bus go round and round LifeWise Academy School are really missing out on key subjects that they are going to need as they progress in their school careers. And let's not the let's really not forget the most important thing which is the potential for indoctrination. And kids are impressionable. And for introducing them to religious teachings during their formative years could shape their beliefs in a way that limit critical thinking and tolerance for diverse perspectives. And I'm just really curious um, if you all can just sum up some of your thoughts um, when it comes to this particular story. Uh, Helen, I'm gonna start with you and then Eli and then go to Jonathan. Um, I do would love to see the TSD um, fighting against this by doing the exact same thing. But in the meantime, <laughs> Uh, for um, the parents out there um, that are secular or, you know, or just think that maybe this shouldn't be happening in schools, that your children get to do special things and learn about the Bible and get taken away to some center, you know, and then are brought back. Um, this reeks of um, superiority. It reeks of othering and it teaches children that I am more special than you because my God is great and you should come over to my team. And it doesn't respect the other choices as other, other parents of how they raise their children. So if you are a parent and you get any sniffings about this happening in your school district, makes make a stink make some noise, say, this is not what I pay my taxes for. This should not be having, happening on my school property. And and then organize because you that's the only way that this type of crap is going to stop. And you have to hold your um, school educators and officials um, accountable for when they allow these things to happen. 
<laughs> Eli? I remember like kind of trying to reconcile when I was a kid between like what I was learning at school and what I was learning at church. Cause I did grow up in the church. And I remember like at a certain point I was like, man, I'm just not really hearing any of this stuff at school, but like I hear the stuff at school all the time. And I just hear that. So like, and it, it was one of those things where like you think about how like, okay, well, if something is true, you don't have to be reminded of it every single Sunday. It can just be true. And then you just remember that it is. And, and you can just, you know, that's the way it is. And it just kind of, I think that's the driving motivation behind this is like, we have to like make sure we're keeping this information in front of kids who still have that, that neuroplasticity who are still suggestible to these ideas. Cause if we wait until they're adults, if we don't, if we don't get this in front of this in front of them before they have critical reasoning skills, they're going to critically reason out of it. And we're, we're going to lose our numbers. Indeed. And Jonathan. School is, uh, my only thought is that school is for learning secular and academic things, useful for a life in an increasingly complex world. Teaching them weird fantasies and Canaanite mythologies as, as reality is not academic, nor conducive to learning, nor good for the child. So I really would implore parents to think about what you're actually teaching your children and whether that's going to help them survive in the world in the next 50 years. And I think you'll find out that religion isn't going to do that for you. So indeed, indeed. And overall, while some parents may see the value in exposing their children to Bible lessons, we must ensure that public schools remain neutral ground where all students, regardless of their religious beliefs, feel welcome and respected. And we would even implore you all to feel respected in watching more of our content by clicking here.